there's so many people living a life of default. They're going through life doing what they've been taught to do, working, chores, living for the weekend in retirement. And yet they have what you termed an echo within them, that there's something more to life. What initial steps would you recommend for people to start moving from that place of that echo to living a life that's more true to themselves? First off, I think that, let me, re, let me just reiterate, I think everybody has the echo. No matter what stage you are in your development or your enlightenment, there's still an echo because there's always more and you're always being moved toward something. The key to living a life out of default, which is to say living a life out of reaction is to live a purposeful and an intentional life. And so we must start by having an intention. Now an intention is just a thought with direction and momentum. It's a thought that's going somewhere. Like we've put some, we've put some thought into the thought and now we're, we're intending for something to happen. So we have to determine first, well, what's our intention? Now people can get real caught up in figuring that one out because that's a loaded question. My suggestion is just to intend to be the light. That's it. One of the most common questions I got as an intuitive reader was, what am I here to do? Like, what's my purpose? Am I, what, what am I, what am I, what's my career supposed to be? And my answer was always, forget about that. Just be the light. When you wake up and you get into your car and you drive to your Starbucks or wherever you're going, be the light. Listen to high vibration music, sing along with it and be in joy. You're changing, not just you and your space, you're changing the road. You're changing all the lights, you're catching all the greens. You're looking over to the car next to you and they're happy because you are in that high vibration. Again, the stronger vibration changes the lesser vibration. And when you get to that Starbucks, be the light. You know how many cranky, crappy people, those baristas must speak to every single day, the cashiers that get snapped at, will you be the person who says a kind word or who just smiles or says, you know, you're doing a great job. Be the light in every way. Be the light, be the love and be of service. And you'll find if you just start there, all the doors begin to open to you. You start meeting the people that you're supposed to meet. You start networking in a way that you're supposed to network. You start getting the really good ideas for your own life because you are hanging out in that high vibration. And again, that's where God starts to populate the life and your purpose reveals itself to you. So don't get hung up with how do I change my default position into an intentional life and then try to figure out that intention instead, just be love. Like we need more of that on this planet, don't you know? We need more people who smile at the barista or who aren't flipping people off in the car. Like we need more of that. And if we can do that, it opens the door to everything else. And then let God do the rest. People often try to tell spirit, you know, tell God, tell creator, well, I need this, I need this bank account amount. I need this kind of husband. I need this kind of job. Well, listen, if you can just focus on being love, being who it is that you truly are and a representative of where it is you truly come from. Well, spirit will take care of all that. Spirit knows what you need. Spirit will bring the right people, the right resources, the right connections. And it's easy. It's easy. To, it's, it's simple. Well, actually, it's simple. It's not always easy, is it? No. To be high vibration. Sometimes it's not that easy. That's why the the bliss discipline is helpful because it hooks you into little areas or pockets that do make you happy. And if you can hold on to that and then get in your car and then go to Starbucks, and if you can sustain it, that's when you're starting to make change, not just in yourself, but in the Starbucks on the roadway in the entire world. That's what a light worker is. That's what a light worker is. Yes. Beautiful, beautiful. You know, when we, when we start down that road and we start thinking about being the light, the stuff in our head starts quieting, our body starts calming, and you'll, you'll finally realize, we, we finally get to a point where we realize we've been cutting ourselves off. It's not that it's not there. We, we cut ourselves off. We're taught to do that. It's another thing we're taught to do. We feel like this all the time. That's cutting off the flow of the energy. So when somebody says you're not in the flow, that's what they mean. You're cut off. So yes, and, and taking time to just be the light. Be the light. It's like you said, it's simple, it, but it takes focus. So it's not always easy because we have a tendency to be so distracted. 
So it takes that focus and not necessarily easy, but it is simple. It is, it is simple. And it's, it's the answer. It's, it's, the answer. it's the answer. And it's always been the answer. I mean, I'm not a sage. You know, I'm not saying anything new. This is what Gandhi said. This is what Martin Luther King Jr. said. This is what Jesus said and what Buddha said. This is the answer. It's love and it's finding our way. You've got to start within yourself, right? And a lot of us, especially those of us who come out of trauma and abuse, we've been programmed so specifically against loving ourselves. And for those of us who have suffered acute trauma, you'll notice when I talk about that, I start to stutter. So let me just moderate the cadence of my voice. Those of us who come out of really acute abuse, um, we have a really, we have a, a long road ahead of us because it's about finding those places in ourselves where we, where we are defaulting, where we are being puppeted based on what was put inside us against our will, right? And how we were programmed and getting in there. And this is, this is what is often called shadow work. And it's so important, but I often caution, I caution people with shadow work because especially for people like me, for people like you, we've been through so much. When you go back into it, you can get stuck there so very easily. And you know, the body remembers, I, I start to stutter because my cells remember what it is that I went through. Look at my body, just how it's changing. Like my whole body remembers what I've been through, but it's about just bringing in the light and loving myself and loving the self that I was when I was there and loving the self that received the programming and the messaging and the transmission that was erroneous and loving myself enough to remove that and to integrate, integrate the person I was with the person that I am now. It's got to start. We, so many of us live in perpetual self-loathing and we don't even know it because we're not paying attention. We're not observing ourselves and the things that we're saying to ourselves. Like, and if you were to stop, I actually... I actually teach my students to set their smartphones to, to go off six, seven, eight times a day. And when it does stop hammer time, no stop. And then think about what you were just thinking about and be really honest. What was your brain just talking about? What was it saying about the world? What was it saying about the people around you? And in particular, what was it saying about you? Because so many of us are constantly chattering to ourselves about how fat we are, how old we are, how uh, worthless we are, how alone we are, and we are, we're in a perpetual state of this. And so it's about bringing the light into that. Start, the love has to start there and loving ourselves enough to be with ourselves. Have you ever been with somebody who seems really interesting, probably has a great story, but can't stop talking can't ever let there be space or quiet or silence between you and them or ever that's the kind of person who is unwilling to actually listen to what's happening and probably because it's so fast and so furious the challenge for us is to observe what we're saying to her how, how are we programming ourselves daily bring light into that, love ourselves through that. And then we become capable to love people and to love the world at that higher level that it needs to be loved. Wonderful. And if you want to know what you're thinking about yourself, listen to the words that are coming out of your mouth. Yeah. Because you can only give what you have. So what's in you, and we create that world, we create this world inside ourselves. What's in you is all that can come out. If it's not there, it can't come out. So if you're wondering... If you're judging people or um, judging yourself, you'll hear it come out of your mouth. Yes. Yeah. If you could send a message to your 20 year old self, what would you tell the younger you? You're not fat. <laughs> That's the first thing I tell my, you're not, you're, you're beautiful. Oh God. I could just get a message to my younger you. Well, you know, um, in order to get out of my house, uh, I married my first husband when I was 18. So, I mean, it's not to say I didn't love him. I did, but I made a lot of choices out of reaction to my situation. So I, gosh, I would, um, I would tell my younger self that anger is not the answer and that people aren't out to get me and that it really will 
get better. And I would try to communicate some kind of a modality that I might have received them that might help me maybe go to therapy, uh, meditation. I don't know. I don't know much that would have reached me back then, but it would definitely be a message of self-love and you're okay. And it's okay. It's okay. And you have the power mm -hmm. to create a new situation for yourself. You have the power to start writing the life that you want to live. That's what I would tell myself.